What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, crunchy, scratch made, magnificent, crispy skin pulled pork sliders. Coming up. This is some pork. Pat it dry. Just your average pork picnic roast. Pick this up at my local grocery store. I'm sure you've seen this cut. It is readily available. And this is basically the bicep of the pig. So the elbow is right here, shank going this way. Boston butt lives from here to about here. And for some reason, this is the only skin on pork cut that you can find at local grocery stores, at least in my neck of the woods. And that's what we want for making crispy skin pork sandwiches. So, not gonna do much right now, except for poke some holes. I got this little hole jabber guy, all these little blades in there. And we're just gonna start smacking it. And that's just gonna help this thing crisp up a little bit down the road. The fat can kind of render through and deep fry the skin from within. Not really sure if this really does all that much, but I already bought it, so we're gonna just keep using it. Beautiful. Other than that, we're really not gonna do much. If there's something weird hanging off like this, we could zip that off. A little gland in here you could pull out. Just because I'm gonna have to clean this knife anyway, so I might as well get some trimming done. But other than that, nothing to do until tomorrow because we're gonna let this rest overnight uncovered on this wire rack in the fridge. And that's just gonna help air chill this thing a little bit and get this skin even drier so we have a much easier time getting it nice and crispy in the morning. So I'll see y'all when it's time to fire up the pit. We got this bad boy fired up to about 300 degrees. And on we go with our beautiful little picnic roast here. Look at this guy. The skin is clearly looking much drier, which is what we want. So on we go. And in true whole hog fashion, now we're gonna give this skin a really nice heavy salt coating. You've seen me do this before for making crispy skin stuff. This is just gonna help draw moisture out of the skin as this thing cooks, but also it's gonna protect the skin from getting really dark and rubbery from all the smoke during this cook. And I know it looks like I'm putting a whole bunch of salt on a piece of meat, which I am, except 99% of this salt is gonna come off later. So have no fear. This is just for skin protecting and crisping, not so much for seasoning. And I'm using table salt just because I had some that I needed to get rid of. And also I think it does a better job on protecting and crisping up the skin just because they're smaller granules. So you get better coverage as opposed to a flakier salt like kosher. Looking good. We're gonna shut this down, maintain some temps for a very long time. This video is brought to you by Zbiotics. As you may know, I love to enjoy a couple of brewskis during these long barbecue cooks. And with the holiday season coming up, it is the season to have a cup of cheer or two. And with Zbiotics, you can enjoy a nice night out and still wake up feeling refreshed and ready to face the day. And how it works is pretty scientific and uses some big words that I don't know how to pronounce. So I'm gonna let them explain it to you for me. Drinking alcohol produces a toxin called acetaldehyde. It's this toxin, not just dehydration, that causes the worst morning after effects of drinking. Using genetic engineering, we built a probiotic that breaks down acetaldehyde. We started with a natural probiotic bacteria found in a Japanese superfood called natto. We altered its DNA so that it produces an enzyme that breaks down acetaldehyde. This is similar to what your liver does, but our probiotic does it better. After spending a year building a prototype, we put it into a drink with this hypothesis. Before drinking alcohol, you drink our probiotic, and it works in your gut throughout the day and night, breaking down acetaldehyde and setting you up for a great next morning. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And knowing that this was created by PhD scientists who just wanna make my morning more productive gives me all the confidence I need to face all the holiday parties that are coming up. And it's also got a 100% money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Mmm, quite tasty. So if you wanna finish off the year strong, make sure your mornings are starting out the right way. Go to zbiotics.com slash chudsbarbecue where you can use code chudsbbq to get 15% off your first order. Again, use my code chudsbbq at zbiotics.com slash chudsbbq. I'll have a link in the description box of this video where you can get 15% off your first order. Thank you, Zbiotics. While we wait for our pork to cook, let's go ahead and get everything else ready. Starting with our buns. Going in with some warm milk, our yeast, and our sugar. Give that a nice little mix. Next up, going in with our eggs, some all-purpose flour, some dough conditioner, and our salt. And just knead this for a little bit till it all comes together. Beautiful. 
And now finally we're gonna go in with our softened butter, a little bit at a time. We're just gonna let this knead for another five, six minutes. Oh, beautiful. Such a beautiful dough to work with. Nice and soft and supple. That's what you're looking for, folks. And now into a grease bowl this goes to double in size for the next hour to hour and one half. Next up, let's go ahead and make ourselves a mop sauce. Starting with a big knob of butter. Just get that nice and melted down. Followed by half of a yellow onion, thinly sliced. And after those are softened down for just a few minutes, we're gonna go in with some garlic. And once those have softened up and are looking real nice, just starting to brown, we can go in with everything else, including some apple cider vinegar, one whole sliced up lemon, some Worcestershire sauce, some hot sauce, some white pepper, some granulated mustard, a little bit of chili powder, and some brown sugar to cut through all that acid. And of course, we gotta have some black pepper in there too. And we're just gonna simmer this for about four or five minutes to make sure all those spices are hydrated, all the sugar is dissolved, you know, really just get all the flavor out of the lemons and whatnot. You know the drill, folks. We're making a mop sauce here because whenever you're making Carolina-style hog barbecue, you gotta have a nice tangy mop sauce. And as always, you really you don't need to be too precise with this stuff. As long as it's nice and flavorful and really tangy, you can pretty much throw whatever you want in there. But I'll have a basic recipe in the description box down below. Looking good. And now to thin it out a little bit and add some more body, kind of dilute that vinegar a little bit, going in with some beer. Oh yeah. Looking good to me. Now that our dough has doubled in size, punch it down. And out it comes. And from here, we're just gonna portion it out into about 50 gram little dough balls. Then we're gonna tuck all the edges underneath, just like a tortilla, and give it the old roly poly until we have a perfect little ball. This is the same recipe I use for a lot of my burger buns, but we're just uh, scaling it down a little bit for these beautiful little sliders. Oh, so cute. Now onto this Silpat line baking sheet we go. And now to cover these with some greased plastic wrap or a damp towel to let them rise for about 45 minutes. Now that these have risen beautifully, we're gonna paint them with a bit of an egg wash, followed by some sesame seeds on top. And now we're gonna make these off at 375 degrees until they are looking absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna set these aside and let these cool. Six hours into this cook, and let's see how this thing is looking. Ooh, looking real nice. Let's get a temp on it. Ooh, feels pretty tender, 180, 185. Nice, it's time to flip. But first we need to take the salt off. Of course, you can always save that for a very unique rub. Hashtag hog salt. Always nice when that comes off all in one big chunk like that. Eh. Ooh, beautiful stuff. Little nugget for daddy. Beautiful color on there though. Got that nice direct heat flavor. Little on the crispy side. Honestly, I was expecting this to take a much longer time to cook. You know, the last time I cooked one of these, I think it was a lot bigger. And now, of course, it is time to start mopping. Oh yeah, love doing this. Something so old school about it. And this is obviously gonna help add some wonderful flavor, but also soften up this underside. So for the next hour or so, I'm gonna come out here probably every 15, 20 minutes and just do some of this. Maybe bump up the temps a little bit, keep an eye on that skin and make sure it gets nice and crispy. About an hour and a half, maybe two hours later, I wasn't really keeping track. I've been mopping this thing periodically. Just like this, as you can see, it's cooked on nicely, adding some wonderful flavor and softening up this underside. Oh, smells so good. So off this thing comes, but first let's check on the skin, make sure that's nice and crispy. Ow, feels crispy. Ooh, yeah, that looks great. Sounds crispy. Off she comes, folks. And now to let this thing rest. I'm gonna give the old foil boat. Oh, what a beautiful sight. We're gonna let this rest down for probably about 45 minutes just to cool down so we can shred it, but leaving the skin exposed so, uh, you know, it stays crispy. a coleslaw if you couldn't tell and today we're going sam jones style on these pork sliders so we're going with a nice chopped cabbage very sweet coleslaw so what i did is just made up a quick mayonnaise here that was just an egg some dijon splash of vinegar and now we're going to go in with a big shot of mustard as well as a little bit of water to loosen that up and of course some sugar just making a basic coleslaw dressing folks tastes like coleslaw needs a big fat pinch of salt though i tell you what Ah, beautiful. Ooh, yep. Oh, just get that nice and mixed up. But that is exactly the consistency we're looking for, folks. Perfect on top of a whole hog sandwich. 
Although in this case, it's just a picnic ham sandwich, but still. Such beautiful buns, folks. Come on. Gotta love that. Under the broiler they go. Looking good. Beautiful toasty little sliders. Ah, ah, ah. Nope, nothing wrong with that. All right, let's dive into this pork, shall we? We'll start by taking this skin off. Ooh, still hot, nice and crispy. Love that. Can't see a morsel like that and not take a bite, am I right, folks? Oh my God. They never get told. You need to make this just for the crispy skin. It is so good. Mm. But you know the drill from here, folks. We're just gonna, you know, pull these bones out. It's pretty hard to do. You know, they don't come out super clean or anything like that. And then we're just gonna shred this on up. And honestly, this was not a bad cook. I put this on around 10 a.m. and right now it's like seven. So this is very doable for a, oop, found some skin. You know, very doable for a weeknight meal or well, a weekend meal or just, you know, making yourself six sandwiches alone on a Thursday. But as I mentioned earlier, we're going Sam Jones style on this pork. So that means I need two cleavers. And now we begin chopping. And chopped pork versus pulled pork is definitely a very great bite because you're not gonna have any big strands coming out and falling into your beard or anything like that. But also, it evens out the playing field for whatever kind of cook you had. You know, if this is super tender, it's gonna chop up great. If it was undercooked, you're chopping it anyway. So you really don't need to aim for tenderness. Great for beginners. And we're gonna chop in the skin as well. And now we mix in all that crunchy skin with all this beautiful chopped up pork. This is looking amazing. Although it's a little dry. I strained all the solids out of this mop sauce that we made earlier. And now we've just got this beautiful liquid. And I think we should just add that right on top. I think it needs a bit more salt. And then it's always a good idea to hit this with a little bit of extra hot sauce. Add some tang and add some heat at the same time. Oh, love it. I'm going with Texas Pete today. You know, a typical North Carolina classic. You see this at a lot of whole hog joints. And then we'll just mix this up. Give this another taste. Mmm, oh, it's so good. Let's make our sandwich. Oh yeah. There is nothing better in this world than the smell of direct heat cooked crispy skin pork. I tell you what. And of course, on top we go with our finely chopped coleslaw, some sweetness, and of course, some nice freshness and crunch. And on with our top buns. Love it. And there we have it, some beautiful pulled pork sliders. I mean, would you just look at it, folks? Pulled pork slider mountain. Made with some outstanding standing direct heat pulled pork crispy skin homemade buns coleslaw oh i'm ready to dive in i mean honestly folks what more in life do you need than that like if you show up to a party with a thousand of these and by the way this is six sliders and i barely made a dent to the amount of pork that i made this is the way to feed a crowd or feed a whole bunch of people watching football games oh Mm-hmm, it's just perfect. Salty, tangy, sweet, spicy, freshly made bread. You got that crunch from the coleslaw. Ugh, that's so good. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's just unbeatable. So cheap, too. How much does a picnic camp cost? Like $9? Feed like 30 people. Oh. Mm. Oh. Now I'm a little torn when it comes to finally chopping your pork the way I did for these sandwiches. Because on one hand, it gives you amazing bite ability. And also, like I mentioned earlier, it makes it cook a lot easier because you could pull this pork butt off at 160 and chop it into whatever texture you want. But that being said, once it's finally chopped and all homogenous, it's kind of approaching canned tuna fish or like dog food texture. Still tastes great, but it's not as exciting as a pulled pork where you get those different textures and strands, get some better mouthfeel. And also, as soon as you chop the skin into the pork, it goes soggy pretty quick. But I must say, I do love the whole chopped coleslaw thing. But also maybe the reason I'm not liking the texture of my chopped pork is because I'm using just the picnic ham. You know, if I had some belly meat and rib meat and shoulder meat and ham meat in there, I'm sure the texture would be a lot better. <clears throat> but without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely incredible crispy skin pulled pork sliders. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.